here, imagine you're a photographer and you've got this beautiful thing that you want to you know, take a picture of out there and you, you got to keep the wing pointed at it the entire time. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Hey everyone, this is Liz Brassaw. I'm one of the chief flight instructors at Thrust Flight and today we're going to be showing you a video of an eight on pylon. It's a commercial ground reference maneuver that we'll fly in the air and also discuss here on the ground. Next, we're going to do eights on pylons, which is the only ground reference maneuver that's in the commercial ACS standard. So it's a pretty fun one to get to work on with commercial students. So initially, I want to set up to be on the downwind and at my pivotal altitude, which you definitely will teach your student on the ground, not in the airplane. Okay, so I mentioned pivotal altitude there in the video. So let's break down what that is in case this is a new maneuver to you. Pivotal altitude is ground speed squared divided by 11.3. That will give you an AGL height that's best set for your airplane to maintain a consistent reference line around a specific point or around a pylon is usually what we call it. So you'll have to add your MSL altitude to that and that will get you the altitude we should begin the maneuver at. So let's say we're flying at 100 knots and when we do the formula, right, ground speed squared divided by 11.3, maybe it comes out to be about 900 feet AGL. So out here, we're at about 500 feet above sea level already. So that would give me roughly 1400 feet to start the maneuver on my altimeter. So you have to do a little bit of math here. One of the biggest mistakes I see from commercial students is that they try and actually pull out their calculator and do that in the airplane. That needs to be pre-done. You can bring a chart with you. You can have a cheat sheet on your knee board. You can have something stored in your iPad or on your phone that's a picture of a couple different airspeeds. I think you're pretty familiar with your airplane and could probably guess within 20 knots where you're gonna be on that given day. So something to calculate before you go flying. Uh, with the, the winds we've got, it's gonna be around 1600 MSL or about 1000 AGL. So I've set myself up at that altitude and I'm gonna go ahead and turn around to be on the downwind now. Yeah, in my opinion, I like to be a thousand feet above the ground. That's just me, I like being safe. Yeah. So if you don't have the pivotal altitude for a thousand feet, go faster. Right, <laughs> add some throttle if it's add, an option. There's more coal on the fire so you could get that thousand feet on the ground. That Again, just give yourself that margin. Yeah. That, that's my opinion. That, I that, agree. Yeah. There's no entry standard in the commercial ACS on speed. It just says that, you know, you're maintaining your reference line with your pylon. Whether I started at 95 knots or I started at 105 knots, the examiner's not going to really mind. Okay, so the winds were coming from the south, southwest today. So I'm trying to set up on a downwind for that. And then I want to enter my actual maneuver on a 45 degree downwind entry angle. But I want to pick my pylons before I do that. So that's the really tricky part, I think, for commercial students. Here at this airplane at Piper Archer, I'm usually picking something right at where the stall strip is or kind of where the wing angles backwards. Uh, so it's a lot closer than usually my students think. So I've got some really good intersections along this road picked out that I could use as pylons All right. that we're coming up on. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter on a 45 degree angle to that. Okay. I mentioned picking suitable pylons before you begin the maneuver and then starting on a 45 degree angle to the downwind in between them. So there's a couple of common errors students make here. The first one is you need to have your pylons perpendicular to the wind. So if the wind's coming straight from the south like it is in our video on that flight, then my pylons need to be an east-west orientation. But they need to be perpendicular to the wind no matter which direction it's coming from. Next, when we say suitable pylons, it matters what size and item you pick to be your pylon or the point you're going to pivot around. So uh, examples of good pylons might be like an isolated tree. It's the only one in the entire field or an intersection where two roads cross or a really notable building, some unique color or roof structure, something that you can spot compared to all other pylons and that you can see it 360 degrees around it. Bad pylon would be like a uh, large body of water it's too big, I need a smaller point than that. Or a tower, are you looking at the top of it? Are you looking at the bottom of it? This structure is 250 feet high. How do I know if we're maintaining a consistent reference line around it? So you wanna pick something fairly small and identifiable so that you can really keep that reference line locked in the whole way around. Which today is gonna to be roughly a 315 heading. I concur. And uh, I'm gonna put the bug there because it's easy for me to forget that as I'm halfway through a maneuver. No. When you were doing turns around a point, 
you were trying to hit specific points as you went around that 360 right. degree turn. Here, imagine you're a photographer and you've got this beautiful thing that you want to take a picture of out there and you, you got to keep the wing pointed at it the entire time. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So military terms, you turned around a point, you're doing a bombing run. You're trying to bomb specific targets. Here, we've got a big gun on the side of our plane and we're trying to shoot our I sure. just so violent. No, it makes it <laughs> visual for the student. Yeah. So I'm waiting till I have a B at my point here. I'm going to go ahead and bank the wing. And I'm just going to try and keep it on the uh, end of that wing the whole way around. So it might look like that reference point is moving as we pivot around this pylon. So if it looks like it's ahead of my wing, I need to make an adjustment. Or behind, I also need to make an adjustment so we could show you that. Yeah. So here it's slightly ahead of my wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to press forward like I'm running to catch it. And it's going to build ground speed, which is all I needed. Exactly. And, and that's what's key about this whole maneuver is understanding the relationship of wind, how it's changing your altitude. Right now, the G1000 says we have a headwind out of the southwest about at 16 knots. Well, now we're kind of coming out of that wind. so might be picking up a little bit of speed as it becomes a tailwind. Yeah. As we pick up that speed, our ground speed goes up, our pivotal altitude gets bigger. So we should be starting to climb here soon. So we go through the corrections there. If it was a no wind day, we would pivot around this pylon without having to make any altitude adjustments. So that's what we tried to talk through was the corrections for my ground speed changing. Every segment of this circle or path around the pylon has the wind approaching you from a different angle, which changes my ground speed. And that's why I have to change my altitude. Because remember, pivotal altitude, right, all started with ground speed. We had a formula calculating ground speed squared, right? So if ground speed changes, it changes what altitude I need to be able to maintain that consistent reference line. Brian used a really good analogy in there about having a gun on the end of your wing, like you're trying to shoot a specific target and keep it consistently pointed at that same point. You could say the same thing about a camera being mounted at the end of your wing, taking pictures of one single spot, so you need to have it consistently locked there. Or perhaps you can imagine like a rubber band or a string coming from the longitudinal axis of your wings or more like the lateral axis of your airplane and reaching that pylon and staying consistent around it the whole way. So we don't have a distance standard that we have to maintain. Your distance can vary, but we have to make sure that we're maintaining the same reference line, which does have an altitude change. So a lot different than the private pilot ground reference maneuvers where we're worried about a consistent altitude. You're allowed to change it in this one. And when we change our altitude, right, or we're changing the pitch of the nose, we know we're affecting ground speed. And that's what we discussed there. If it looks like I'm falling behind my pylon, it's ahead of my wing and I'm back here, I need to speed up to get there. And I know one easy way to do that is to trade the altitude to increase speed or vice versa. I can slow down or raise my nose, right? Increase an altitude and that'll decrease my ground speed. So that's the adjustments you're making. You could even call this a constant ground speed maneuver. So you're making pilot adjustments uh, on the controls to try and keep the ground speed consistent, even though the wind is changing and that ground speed would have changed without any input from you. It's really easy to over control it. I want to make sure I'm not pitching up to gain 300 feet of altitude or pushing down to lose hundreds of feet. Right, it's small corrections just to keep that reference line exactly on my visual pylon. So we're just keeping it right on this uh, intersection of this, this road and it looks like another small side street all the way around. And I wanna exit about 90 degrees from where I started. You kind of imagine 45 degrees to the downwind going the other way to the right, not to the left. So that's it right there. So I'm gonna roll wings level. So we don't actually fly a full 360 degree turn around each pylon. If you caught what I described there, you fly basically a 270 degree turn. We're gonna exit on a 45 degree to the downwind in the opposite direction. So on the first pylon, we flew around the left wing. So it was 45 degrees to the left and we're gonna exit on a 45 degree angle to the right now and fly around a pylon from the right side window. So it's not a full 360. Another really common error I see from students is they wanna enter and exit on the same heading and that doesn't quite work. We have to leave a little bit more premature than that. We're gonna transition now to the pylon off the right side. And so I want to make sure that I keep my pylons perpendicular to that wind. So I need a few seconds here of level flight before we go into the second one. There we go. I'm going to bank my wing. And it looks like we've got a good farmhouse there with some trees around it right off this road that I could use. 
go. Right now we're showing 102 knots and it's slowing down. So that probably means we're going back into the wind. So therefore our pivotal altitude is changing. We can't forget that we're still flying an airplane in an area uh, where other aircraft could be or other traffic. So occasionally I need to be looking ahead, making sure the area is clear, making sure my flight path is clear. Sure, and, and Liz is doing the flying right now. I'm kind of the flight instructor. While you're watching this video, you'll kind of see my head is looking not at that point. I mean, it is, but I'm also just trying to stay heads up. I'm looking for other aircraft. I've personally seen a lot of crop dusters out here. No ADSB, no transponder, no radio uh, doing their job. So you're going to be in their way if you're doing this maneuver. So you have to be really careful. It's a really great call out. Watch for that traffic. You should be doing it as the person flying, but it's certainly uh, a good double check as a flight start to keep your head up. Out of Dara, about uh, 10 and a half miles. I've just tried to make small corrections here using pitch to keep that pylon right on my reference point. And I'm going to keep note of my heading as I'm coming around. I want to be able to fly essentially this maneuver in perpetuity. I fly back around my first pylon. So I need to exit on a 45 degree angle to the downwind in between my two pylons and should be pretty set up to fly around my first one again, which as we roll wings level here, looks like we can see the first one again and I could easily pivot around that pylon. There's a few other things that we want to talk about with an ADOM pylon that we didn't share in the video. Ryan mentioned coordination. That's really important as it's mentioned in the commercial ACS standards as well as good airmanship. Another item that we didn't really specifically mention in the video was how much bank are you allowed to use? This maneuver, you're permitted to use up to 40 degrees bank, but no more. So I have a lot of students that initially are so worried about exceeding that bank standard that they pick a pylon that's too far away. A good spacing or a good distance in between the two pylons should roughly be the distance between you and the runway on downwind. So maybe three quarters of a mile or a mile distance. So you're gonna have to practice to find out what does that look like? Does it look like it's all the way off my wingtip? Does it look like it's halfway down my wing? And when I bank, it now shows me a more accurate representation of the distance. But in the end, we wanna make sure that we have a good amount of bank, but not exceeding the 40 degree standard. The problem with picking a pylon too far away is that I can't even bank to move around it, right? I might have to be wings level because of how great the distance is between me and the pylon. So something to be careful or watchful of. I mentioned that if you've flown this maneuver properly, you could continue doing it back and forth, back and forth around your two pylons. The expectation on the check ride with the examiner is that you just do one rotation around the first pylon and around the second pylon and exit on the initial heading. So don't continue to fly it unless they've requested it. But that's how I know if I've, I've set the maneuver up properly and flown that second pylon appropriately. The last thing I wanna discuss is the reference in the commercial ACS standards to your consideration of emergency landing points. If you notice in our video, there's a lot of farmer's fields around. There's a lot of clear places we could put this airplane if needed. That might not be what your training area looks like. So you really wanna take that into account because of how close to the ground you're operating. There's not a lot of room for planning and finding a place to set down the aircraft should something happen. So we wanna make sure that's something that we take into consideration before we begin the maneuver and we pick pylons that allow for some exits if needed. And then we'll just exit on this heading. We don't need to, to fly multiple laps, so. Well, that about wraps up today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you've got questions about the maneuver or this is one of your favorites or least favorites, leave us a comment and let us know. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.